we're saying that this conference is about our future is their future. Our, our future is linked to preserving their future. So that's an important message that I'd like to communicate. Since this conference is really based on the environment and nature and the world outdoors or underwater, what better place to do these stand-ups than in the woods? What can you say about Dr. Bradney Chambers, other than he's the Secretariat of CMS, Conference on the Conservation of Migratory Species? He's, he's an amazing guy who was born in Canada in the 60s. Um, he brings youth and vibrance and, and a millennial insight to the future of the Conference of the Parties in terms of the UN environment. And, and he's just, he's got that insight and that drive and that love of animals that is so necessary if you want to really guide a project like this. He is the guiding force behind COP12. And, and he will be behind COP13 as well in India. Bradney Chambers. We're here for the, con the Conference of the Parties, COP12. Uh, this is a, a meeting that takes place every three years where all the members of the convention come together in one place to decide what's the new things we're going to do to protect migratory species. Um, we're a small secretariat. Um, I lead that secretariat. We're here from Bonn, Germany. The COP travels around the world. Um, right now we're here in the Philippines. Three years ago we were in Quito, Ecuador. And three years from now we're probably going to be in India. Now, th this type of convention is, is a huge event. And, and so then you wonder, how do you get the word out? How do you get to all the parties that you need to get to and reach the people that you need to reach in order to make uh, an event like this a successful event and make it such a way that people want to be here and, and people want to experience it? One of the big um, uh, issues that we're trying to tackle here is to make the convention more understandable to, to processes like the development processes and economic processes. We know that everybody loves our animals, right? I mean, they can identify them, they want to take pictures with them, they want to go diving with them, um, they, want to, they want to be, you know, they want to watch them, and that's great. But, you know, to make the case to protect them, you really have to, to understand their, their economic value. And so this conference is really important to try to, to bring countries around the table to see their economic value, that they, you know, they provide billions of dollars in revenues for ecotourism, that they provide services for agriculture by, by, by pollination, by seed dispersal that probably are worth billions and billions of dollars, that they control in, they control insects um, through our bats and birds, birds that eat these insects. That they control uh, health problems, diseases such as Tika, uh, Zika and uh, malaria. That they provide um, so many of these important services that we need to protect them. Not only because we identify with them, we like what you know, we like watching them, or we have some type of spiritual or cultural relationship with them but because they have economic value. And that's, this is why it takes years of planning. It takes lots of negotiations with um, not only the, the members of the convention, but also the host government. Um, it takes a lot of passion from people, a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work, a lot of um, long hours. Um, it takes careful political planning. Um, because you're dealing with, uh, with multiple governments. Um, it really takes uh, an enormous amount of time and effort to, to pull off an event like this. But it's worth it because, I mean, the result is that you're adding protection and conservation to protect the threatened species around the world, and we're losing them. So it's, it's definitely uh, worth the effort. 
how do you deal with all these different personalities and languages and people from all these different countries with different customs and different patterns, the way they live, the way they eat, the way they speak? Um, you know, it's, it's quite an undertaking and, it, and it's really mind boggling when you really think about it. Well, we work in the United, in the United Nations. This means we we're used to dealing with lots of different languages, and we respect cultures, and we respect uh, people from all over the world, from different walks of life, from different uh, classes, different uh, economic classes. I mean, um, it also means that we we have to work in the three languages of the convention, um, which are French, English, and Spanish. Everywhere we go, every meeting we have, we basically need to translate between the, the, the three languages. Um, yeah, this is part of the work of the United Nations. It's part of the work that we do every day. Why are you having COP12 in Manila and what, Manila, and what are you hoping to accomplish by having it in Manila, having it in Asia and in the Philippines? Manila is a very good choice for us because we have never been in Asia before. And the convention is growing bigger and bigger. Um, and uh, we don't have as many members in Asia as we would like. And so being here gives us the uh, exposure to, um, to attract new members. And in fact, we've done that in a way because we have our members here with us, but we have 24 uh, countries that in fact have not joined the convention, but because we're in the vicinity of Asia, they've come to the meeting, we can tell them all about the convention, and our members can tell them about the convention and convince them that they need to join us within the convention, because it's so important to have um, more and more member states, because if, a, if, a, if an animal moves between uh, countries and that country is not a member, then it doesn't have to have the same policies to protect it. So it's so important that the whole range, as we say, where the, where the species moves is member of the convention. Plus, uh, it's how we engage the stakeholders, NGOs, civil society, business, and we have uh, over 1,500 people attending this conference. So those are two big indicators. Of course, success is based on um, the outcomes. Um, if we can get all of the 35 um, species that were proposed to be listed for uh, protection under the convention, that would be a big step forward. You know, having rules and regulations are great, but how do you get the uh, members to comply? How do you get people to actually go by the rules that you set? And, and what happens when they don't comply? We also want to strengthen the convention. Um, the convention really requires a compliance and review mechanism to make sure that all of the obligations that countries agree to, um, that, that we have a way of making sure they're being implemented or they're being um, complied with at, within their own countries. And so this time around, in fact, after 35 long years, um, the convention possibly, fingers crossed, uh, might get a review a compliance mechanism so that if a country doesn't comply with the provisions that is signed up for, that we can help them come back into compliance. And of course this is important because when we help them come back into compliance, that means we're helping protect the species. You know, in our conversation, I, I, it also brought to mind what about the sustainability of CMS and the COP series of conventions, you know? How do you keep them fresh and, and how do you make sure that they're sustainable? That in three years there'll be an organization and there'll be the funding and the ability to hold COP 13. We're not a rich convention. Not a lot of the UN conventions are. So that means we have to use the means that are perhaps more readily available to us. We're very, um, I think we're very good at so doing social media, um, Facebook and Twitter. We use a lot, and our species are a big attraction. I mean, they're beautiful animals, and people can identify with them. And when they identify with the animal, they can identify with the with the convention. Um, we write opinion pieces in the newspapers, um, trying to draw attention to some of the plights that the animals have on climate change, conflict with the uh, wind turbines, um, conflict 
with underwater noise. There's a lot of poaching that goes on. So we, we talk about these issues. We do a, our website is great. Our website just actually uh, collapsed because there was so many member states that uh, or so many countries that uh, it collapsed for a few minutes. Um, we were able to get it back online, but it's very popular. People want to come to the website, and they're directed to all sorts of resources and information um, that they can get um, from that website. Um, and it's been, it's been getting much, much better. Now, if you wanted to know about CMS and COP12 or COP13, um, who's be who better to go to than Dr. Bradney Chambers, the Secretariat, the guy who runs the whole thing? So I asked him if in his own words, if he was able to enlighten us and tell us what CMS is all about. We're tech, we, sometimes we can be a technical organization. We belong to the UN. We're talking about species that, you know, sometimes can, a little bit biologists and, and ornithologists and um, other scientists, it can become technical about these issues. And we have to take it from the, from the technical level to the political level to make it understandable to the to the member states, but at the same time we have to take it to the to the every person in the street. And so sometimes it's a bit hard, but I think we're getting really much better at that.